I, uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me? No, the microphone. The microphone is on. I can take the other microphone. Pick a water? Yes. Hi, better now? So, good afternoon. I'm Carlos Marquez from Federal University of Florida, of Santa Catarina in Florida, Naples. And I will talk about, of, uh, it's in general, I'm interested in studying exotic particle uh, effects in the description of compact stars. Here I will be talking in special of effects of delta bions in magnetars because in this seminar we are interested in magnetic fields consequence. Uh, this work was made in collaboration with Professor Professor Deborah Menezes, Veronica Dexheimer, and Professor Debaraki and colleagues at Florianopolis. Here are the the presentation I will be the, the works I'll be uh, making my presentation based on, but I will give more an overall idea of the type of study we can do when considering magnetic field effects in the, in the description of compact stars. Uh, I was kind of, of afraid that my my subject here will be a little off tune with the, mod, the most of the, the presentations here. But today we had Professor Manuel presentation and Jose Jimenez already. So I think I will not be alone uh, when talking with the, the other part of the QCD diagram where we, when we are interested in lower temperature regimes and higher densities. So, uh, I will skip the, present, the, the introduction about um, magnet, uh, neutron stars and, and stellar evolution, as Professor Ma Manuel Madero already talked earlier. And I will give an overall idea of how do we do our studies in this subject, at least in, in the group of Professor Devil. Uh, we start with a quantum theory that describes the microphysics of the interactions between nucleons or nucleons and hyperons and electrons and every kind of particle we, we believe that are presenting such dense state of the matter. And from it, we can derive uh, particle, fra particle fractions, or which is what kind of of particle we have present in the in the interior of these objects, and other phase phase transition, and so and so on. Uh, we, starting from the microphysics, we get equations of state that you can later use to study phase transitions, or when we take in and put this equation of state uh, together with hydrostatic equilibrium conditions, we go to the microphysics of compact stars. So we will have a microscopic stellar object uh, described accordingly to our nuclear or a hadronic model. Uh, the magnetic fields can enter or uh, in two steps of this process. We can put an external magnetic field to our, to our model and, and calculate and take, it, take its effects when we calculate uh, the charge neutrality equilibrium conditions uh, chemical equilibrium conditions, and this other stuff 
that will give you the the microscopic the microscopic composition of the hadronic matter, uh, or you can use uh, hydrostatic uh, equations that take in only, that take into the account uh, the magnetic field effects. They w will be two different things that I wish to talk a bit in, in this presentation. Pass my slide. So, first of all, the kind of um, effective models we use in, in the description of stellar matter. We, well, there are several uh, approaches to have a relativistic uh, equation of state to dense matter. Here, I will sh I show the idea of the Valesca type models, or quantum hydrodynamics, that starts from the original idea of Yukawa that the interaction between nucleons are mediated by the exchange of mesons. So we take this idea and we, we disregard the, the substructure of, of, of hadrons and, and, and write this Lagrangian that have many terms and could have many more. Uh, the first line, we, we have uh, the, the term referring to the baryons, or the psi are the baryons, the nucleons, the hyperons, it depends on the baryon, the baryons you are taking into account. The, and with the interaction with scalar uh, mesons that emulate the attractive component of the nuclear force, the vector mesons that emulate the repulsive component of this force that will be very relevant in, in higher densities. And we can have other kind of mediators, me mesons mediating. Uh, for example, a strange meson that will only affect particles that carry strangeness, or which is the the hyperons that have a strange quark inside them, and the isovector uh, meson that differentiate the the part the the ions by the the isospin. Well, he, here I have only uh, an example of the of the model we can use. Next slide, part. And these coping parameters between the mesons and the baryons are fitted to, to describe nuclear matter quantities, uh, which is the saturation density, the energy per nucleon at the saturation density, incompressibility, symmetry, symmetry energy, symmetry energy slope, and all kinds of parameters fitted for nuclear matter constraints, which is close to the saturation density, more or less. Here I have some models. I will be using more this edit 3 omega rho, because we are taking a model fitted to at the saturation density of 0 0.15 Fermi to the minus 3, the density. And going to and going to apply them to neutron stars that could have densities six, eight times bigger than that. So, despite all these models, more or less agree at the lower densities, they will have very different results when we are far from the saturation density. We can try to, con to constrain them by astrophysical observations of neutron stars. So later on, I intend to talk a bit more about that. So here, briefly, the technicalities. 
from that from that Lagrangian, we get the field equations, and when we are solving them, we we, imply, we impose chemical equilibrium and charge neutrality. These two equations, uh, these two bounds, because that are expected to occur in, in neutron star matter. First slide. Here I show the. Then we get solving the the few the equations we get the densities, the vector density and the scalar density of every component of the matter, and we can have the equation of state, which is energy density and pressure. And with that, we plasma slide for four. We can input this equation of state in the hydrostatic uh, equation, which must be the relativistic one. Here, the TOV, the Thomas Oppenheimer Volkov equations. And in putting the equation of state in that, we get, we get mass and radius of the, of the expected neutron star. So, we have to sh to to choose what kind of particle we want to allow to exist in our in our phase because we see we don't even see but we know that it is the neutron stars we don't know what the what are in their interiors so of course from the first approach we must have protons neutrons and electrons mixed in this phase. The electrons must be there too to ensure the, the chemical equilibrium and the charge neutrality conditions. And, but it's almost consensus in the literature to include the hyperons or the, the whole baryonic uh, octet of the spin one half because, well, they must appear, they must be stable in such high densities as we expect to occur in these, inter in these objects. Here, we want to include also the delta resonances that have three spin three halves because, well, there are plenty of reasons. One of them is why not we can include to see what happens. And the other one is, well, the masses of the deltas are even lower than the masses of the higher, the, the heavier uh, hyperons. For example, the cascades have mass 13, 15, and the deltas are lighter than that. So the mass threshold must be, must be fulfilled closely. And other more recently advocated reason is, well, the model are fitted to only nuclear matter, only protons and neutrons. We can adjust when we, when we include the other kind of particles, we have to adjust the coupling between the mesons and the baryons by this parameter x, which is a front of the nucleons. So these these eggs are found to adjust, for example, uh, lambda lambda potentials of this or this kind of measurements. But well, for deltas, we we don't have much information constraining this this coping. But we know they must be uh, the the repulsive coping must be slightly bigger than the nuclear one. So it, it gives us a hint to solve the well-known hyperon puzzle because we have this situation where when describing neutron stars, we must include heavier particles beyond the nucleons because they are expected to, to occur energetically simply. But having more particles 
you make your equation of state soft, which implies that we will not be able to describe more massive compact stellar objects. So it's kind of a problem because you should have something that will make your models less appliable. But having deltas, as I showed in other, other studies, as they are more repulsive, repulsively interacting with one another, they turn the equation of state stiffer again. So it can, having them can kind of counterbalance the effect of, of not having them. So, well, uh, we want to study the effects of delta particles. And they have spin three halves. So when we include magnetic field effects, a whole kind of new issues must appear because they have another, this, this other spin. So magnetars are a class of neutron stars. Here, this figure, I show, a, it's a famous figure. It's shown all known neutron stars uh, in terms of the, the period and the period time derivative, or PP dot. Each dot is a neutron star. And this upper right corner, we have uh, neutron stars with higher periods and higher periods derivative, which, are, which means they, they spin slowly and they spin, and they are loss, losing the, the, the speed of spin fastly. So there are kind of 20 candidates to magnetize. It's, it's a few because we know more than 200 pulsa, uh, pulsars, yeah? pulsars or neutron stars. And well, this, this slow spinning of them and together with, with some X-ray emissions and such, I use it to argue that they have very high magnetic field in their surfaces. 10 to the 50, uh, I know there are some studies that suggest they are, mm, they are not that big, but I'm considering they go to 10 to the 50. And it's reasonable to believe that the, the magnetic field is even bigger inside these stars, going to 10 to the 80 Gauss. I, don't, I didn't say the unit. So the, these stars could have uh, a profile in magnetic field that goes from 10 to the 18 Gauss inside to 10 to the 15 the surface. So uh, quick notes on, I, I told how you solve the, the, how you describe nuclear matter without magnetic field. If we want to include the magnetic field, we must take into account like the Landau level uh, occupying uh, the, the Landau level degeneracy and persons like. From that, we get these expressions from the for the energy spectra and for the densities. I, I just show them because, uh, but we. We use them to calculate this kind of stuff. Persons like this, the particle populations of the matter. Here I'm using a constant magnetic field in the z direction, a very high magnetic field, three to sorry. In the first line of of plot, I show the result without the magnetic field. So we can see that neutrons dominate and then protons and electrons start appearing. Here you can see how the density, how the particle population varies with the density. 
the first two columns are varying how the deltas couple. And the third is uh, another model used for comparison. I won't be talking about them. But uh, we can see that varying the delta meson coping, we vary, we change a bit how early or later the particle, the delta particle, start appearing. And the lower, the bottom, the bottom line, I have a magnetic field effects. So if I have a very high constant magnetic field, I, will, I can see that some particles start appearing earlier than when you don't have magnetic fields. The solid lines I take into account the anomalous magnetic moment of the particles and the dashed lights regard this, the, the anomalous magnetic moment. But the, the tendency is the same, for example. From the top to the bottom left plot, I can, we can see that delta plus plus and delta plus are favored and start appearing where when, when the magnetic field effect is included, that we, you wouldn't have if you disregard the magnetic field. Next slide. Uh, here I show the, the, the spin polarization of the, the, the matter. The, the main thing is I want to show is that including the anomalous magnetic moment would change strongly the, the spin polarization of the matter because then we will have uh, protons and neutral particles also interacting with the magnetic field. Post my slide. Well, in this first part, I did the calculations of the particle population in the model, including the magnetic field as an, an, as an external given field with constant uh, direction and constant value. The other thing we can do is take the equation of state with, without magnetic field and solving an hydrostatic relativistic equation that would take into account magnetic field effects. The TOV, the Tom Oppenheimer Volkov, is this is a solution of the Einstein equations where, where you assume isotropy, where you assume symmetry, spherical symmetry, and, and this kind of stuff. If you want to include magnetic field effects, first of all, the the star won't be more anymore a spheric object because they will be distorted by the magnetic field that breaks down the, the isotropy of the of the of the the space. And other thing is that we expect reasonably that we will have a, gra a profile of the magnetic field with the density. And usually what people, what people used to do some years ago was to give, write a profile, a B depending on, on the density, and solve the equation of state using this profile. But that won't be, that, that's not right because you break the uh, Maxwell equations from, from the scratch. So what now people do is to use this code called Lorene that was developed some, by some people in France. And they solve directly the, the Einstein equations and the Maxwell equations together when you input an equation of state and they give you the, the magnetic field profile. Here I show how including 
magnetic field would, would affect the, rad the radius of neutron stars. But now I'm talking about, let me see in this figure, the equatorial radius, because if, if the bigger the magnetic field, the more distorted in the equatorial plane the star will be. To the extreme, if you put a very high magnetic field, a central magnetic field, you have a, like a, a donut shaped uh, neutron star. But here we limited ourselves to five to times to five times ten to the seventeen Gauss. We only have like distorted uh, an egg shape for the for the stars. Next slide. Here I show the magnetic field profiles. The the magnetic field is written in terms of the spheric, harmoni spheric harmonics, and they, they will have a very important poloidal component and a, a more important L equals, sorry, toroidal component. And this is very significant both because some nicer, the telescope that that is now looking for for neutron stars. Some nicer results show this toroidal component is very important uh, when you try to explain the shape of the hot spots of the spinning pulsars where they they emit they emit the the pulse that we we perceive here. And well, here I have the, the, the magnetic field profiles. That will be an output of my hydrostatic equilibrium calculations. So I, we don't have a, an approach that gives you the, both things, both things, but we can conclude that the magnetic field effects in the microscopic uh, compositions, in the microscopic, in the microscopic composition of the neutron stars are not as relevant in, in, the, in the microscopic astrophysical observations are as the like the distortion caused by the magnetic field in the in the in the shape of the stars and in, in this kind of stuff. Just next slide. Well, another thing we did, I will be very fast, Plasma slide, it's to analyze how magnetic field would affect the phase transition between radio and quark phases. Here it's out without deltas, plus or slide. And well, the conclusion is that it won't affect much too. So again, the, the most important part of, of considering magnetic field effects in the description of compact stars is in the breaking of the isotropy and and making your star looks like deformed, it won't be very significant having uh, considering the magnetic field effects in the microscopic component. Not irrelevant because we'll have more deltas, for example, but it won't be the, the big issue. Well, here are the conclusions. The next steps in our, of our research is to improve the understanding of delta copings and improving the, the study of the spin tree half effects of, on the magnetic field. Uh, one minute to make a small advertisement. 
Professor Deborah, together with Professor Tiago and I, turned some notes, lecture notes of her in a textbook. And it's only, it's the only textbook in Portuguese available with nuclear physics, uh, about nuclear physics, to undergraduate level in print. There are other old books, but this now it's available. If you are interested, please take a look at Divadaria da Física editor. And thank you to the organizing committee, especially Ana Julia and Joao for listening. Hi, thank you for the talk. I have a very basic question. So you show this table where you show the hyperons, and you said it's a consensus to include them in the equation of state. So why is it a consensus? Is it because it has to match some observational data, or? No, no, it's a consensus. Like, it seems to be obvious to include them, because we will have such high, uh, such high energy densities in the interior of neutron stars that, well, probably these particles start popping up, uh, and we must consider that. So in fact, the experimental observations would, would make you not include them, because we have like these two solar masses, neutron stars, that start becoming difficult to describe if you include hyperons in your model, because they soften your equation of state, and you, you don't want that. But you kind of must, because, because of energetical considerations, directly, yes. Thank you for the talk. Um, also, a very basic question. In terms of what Manuel Maleiro just told us before the coffee break, uh, I saw your profile of the intensity of the magnetic field as a function of the radius of the star. Can you show it? This. Yes, uh, you see, uh, what you have is a, a very large intensity at the middle, but it drops to the surface, not by orders of magnitude, but only by a factor of five. Can you comment on what Manuel said and also the observations related to this intensity at the surface, which seem to be very high? Well, the, this model, these this, uh, calculations I made were in, in such a way that you give the central polaroidal uh, magnetic field, and they try to solve the Einstein equation as the magnet and the Maxwell equations together. And this profile is kind of an output of that. Well, I, I never thought about why, yeah, in fact, it's very high, the, sur the surface, the surface magnetic field expect uh, shown by this calculation. Oh, yeah. In fact, I you must need about. some input parameters to, to, to have numbers, so what would be the... Sorry, I, I give the input uh, in this plot, let me read, five, to, five times 10 to the 17 in the center of the star. Ah, this is your input. It's my input. And then the curve uh, follows from the solution of the... You can invert the observation. So in the center, if you have 10 to the 15 at the yeah, surface, yeah. you will never no, get no. something more than 10 to no, the 16 it's, it's at the center. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, just I want to check the Lagrangian. Could you please show oh. the, the matter Lagrangian and the yes. electromagnetic interaction Lagrangian? Yes. Probably first page or something. No, it's like it is it is. Here? Yeah, here. Ah, uh, okay. 
uh, Varian doesn't interact with Lorentz scalar meson or not? Because no. Of M. So. Oh, the M, the M, the big M of the Lagrange is the effective mass mm -hmm. of the nucleon or of the the baryon. Mm. Effective mass of nucleon, but effective mass, how you generate? So by, by interaction or by yeah yeah it's the parameterization. It's the very mass and minus the scalar field yeah. and my, okay. and this is okay okay it's uh, okay it's not too explicit okay okay so and electromagnetic uh, interaction if you have please show anomalous magnetic interaction if you have I wanted it to no, see. no 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 uh, sorry it's the okay notation. last question. Thanks a lot for the talk. So um, when you consider a spin three half particle in the magnetic field, then I guess for one of the spin orientation, the energy is going to hit, hit zero at some critical magnetic yeah, yeah. field. Um, is this somehow out of your range uh, of uh, interval for the magnetic field? Or how do you deal with this? So you as are saying that like we have Total polarization is that I, I didn't understood. So the question is that when you look at the effective mass of a spin three okay. half particle, okay. then it, it decreases with the magnetic okay, okay, field, okay. and at okay. some point it becomes zero. Okay, okay. Is this no. a problem or so? Not? We we look at we look at that, that but it, this this point where it becomes zero is beyond what will appear in in the solutions. So. But it depends on the model. Some models, it happens quite soon. Some, some relativistic model for the model. So, but we, we, we don't, don't, we didn't use these models because of that. Quick. Quick. Uh, in this slide? Ten. Ten. So it's like that? OK, OK. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is spin polarization of the mother. Can, can you have some argument to s explain if when you change the model, they change a lot if you compare for L3, double O, and CMF? Yeah, no, I can explain. Uh, we, we didn't uh, manage, but the CMF model, I don't know if you know it's the Kyle They are like less susceptible to appearing to the appearing of the particles. Like they, uh, we believe that have something to do with that. But in the well, I don't know. I don't. I don't have an an explanation to that. The point I want to express is that including the magn the anomalous. Mag the magnetic moment will change considerably in in the in the RMF models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Okay.